Number 15 then from the 2000 Advanced Higher. Here we've got this function involving logarithms in the denominator. Derive expressions for the first and second derivatives and then obviously we're going to use them to find stationary points and points of inflection. But first of all, what's the first and second derivative? Well, for the first derivative, we're just going to use the quotient rule. Simple pattern, same as you use patterns for anything else like squaring a bracket and so on. Which is, in this case, square the denominator. And then, like the product rule from which it arises, it's differentiate the top, that's one. Leave the other function alone, minus. Leave the top alone, no differentiate the other function, and ln x just becomes 1 over x. Tidy that up. ln x minus 1 over ln x squared. And that'll just have to stay like that. There's no rule for simplifying products of logarithms. Second derivative. Well, quotient rule again, unfortunately. Now I've got ln x squared to square, so that'll be ln x to the power 4, then the same as before. So differentiate the top, differentiating the numerator there. ln x goes to 1 over x, that's a constant, so it goes, times, leave the other function, the denominator alone, which is ln x squared minus, leave the top alone, ln x minus 1, times the derivative of the denominator, which is now a function of a function. So it'll be outer function first, 2 times the ln x to the power 1, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, which is 1 upon x. Then, how am I going to tidy this up? Well, I can either multiply it all out, but I think I'll just knock out, take out some common factors. I can see both of these parts has got a 1 over x, and they've definitely got an ln x. Well, those ones are hidden together in there. Well, that'll do to begin with. That'll leave me with an ln x for that, minus, and I've got a 2, times this part, a 2 times an ln x minus 1, all over ln x to the 4. Well, this part in here then is going to give me, I've got ln x, take away two of them, so that's just 1, and that's going to be plus 2. So I've got 2 minus ln x, and the rest of this can go. So the top part's going to be 2 minus ln x. That x can go underneath, and that ln x will knock out one of those, making it ln x to the power 3. B. Obtain the coordinates and nature of the stationary point of the curve. Well, the stationary point means that the derivative should equal zero. There's all the information there. So if the derivative is to equal zero and its rational expression is sufficient for the numerator, that's ln x minus one to equal zero, in which case ln x will have to equal one, in which case x is going to equal e to the power one, which is e. Feeding it back in, the y coordinate will be given by f of x, which is e over ln e, ln of e is just 1, so it's also e. So there's the stationary point then, e, e. What's its nature? Well, putting that value of x into the second derivative gives me this. If x equals e, then the second derivative of e is going to be 2 minus ln e over ln e cubed, which is going to be 2 take away 1 over 1 cubed, which is positive. So if the second derivative is greater than zero, that means it's going to be concave up. You've got increasing gradients, so that's a minimum turning point. So the answer to that is I've got a, a minimum turning point at E. e. Part C. Obtain the coordinates of the point of inflection. Now, the point of inflection wasn't uncovered by the first derivative because that first that point of inflection wasn't horizontal. There will be some point of inflection where the curvature changes from one way to the other. It's something that, in this case, the gradient at that point isn't zero. 
you'll find points of inflection from the second derivative. So if I'm looking for a point of inflection, if I just put it down that way, I'm looking for values of x such that the second derivative is zero. Again, if I've got a rational expression, it's sufficient for the numerator of that expression to equal zero, in which case ln of x equals two. So x is going to be e to the power two e squared. Feeding it back in, what have I got for the y coordinate? Well, the y coordinate is going to be e squared over ln e squared. And of course, ln e squared is by definition 2, because that says what power of e gives e squared. So there's my point of inflection, e squared, and I'll just write that as a half e squared. It didn't ask, only ask for the coordinates, it didn't ask for the nature of that point of inflection, whether it was rising or falling. In order to do that, we'd either have had to find a value before, or put numbers into f dash dx to get its gradient. There it is. Point of inflection. There you are.